Up until the time I was in my high school years, I didn't know I was doing art. I was just entertaining myself. And then uh, I walk into the Mexicano Art Center and boing, this said, this is you. I loved it. I loved it. I, I, I saw the Zapatas and I saw the Pancho Villas in there and I saw the Aztec warriors being, you know, in battle and you know, on these canvases that they had there. And uh, I, uh, I knew that that was for me. And I ended up uh, dropping out and I went into... Uh, Joined the Navy, actually. I had my mom sign me in, and I was uh, brainwashed, basically. I was all gun ho to go fight communism. And, and so the uh, second day I was in boot camp, I realized I made a mistake. Uh, it was just the mistreatment. I never expected to be treated in that manner. I go AWOL. I did some time in the brig, and, and eventually in 1970, I, uh, well, actually 71 is when I actually got out of the service. But by that time, uh, in 1970, the summer of 1970, I had walked into the Mexicano Art Center, and that in itself also uh, turned me on to uh, the idea of who I was. And, and then, uh, lo and behold, there I am working in the center, painting something, and there's a bunch of racket going on outside, and guess what? The Chicano moratorium was passing by, protesting the war, protesting uh, you know, the, school, the schooling, the, the immigration situation. Uh, the very same things that we're protesting at this very moment in time. Forty years later, I'm glad to say I'm still pro a protester. I was a bat boy for the L.A. Dodgers uh, for three years. And I shook hands with Ronald Reagan, and um, I have a photo of that. And, and I thought, oh, wow, he's a good guy, nice guy, and all this. And, and then I, I go to Cal State Fullerton, I take Chicano Studies, and they said that he was uh, really hard on the farm workers. He didn't want a union. They, they, they put the police and barricade them from, you know, walking the street peacefully. And uh, I, I just really got, I tore up those photos. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, and he was a Democrat <laughs> at the time as governor. Chicano Studies, I uh, went to uh, ask him if there's any uh, art uh, communities around uh, to work with artists. Uh, and see art, uh, and they told me there's one in East LA, Mexican Art Center. So um, I was after the summer of uh, Cal State Fullerton. I would I went to this uh, center, and they were uh, very nice. And uh, they would say you want to have a show or you want to do something here, uh, and um, it was it was good. And I told them I could I know about printing, posters, uh, graphics. The beautiful thing about Mexicano was that. It was a grassroots organization uh, put together by artists that believed in the community and uh, wanted to give back to the community. So uh, all that material that was there was uh, donated. Uh, so anytime uh, I wanted to go in there, I could uh, grab a sheet of paper, uh, crayons, paints were there, brushes were there. They would have gallery shows. Uh, they would have uh, a jazz, uh, um, um, straight ahead type jazz music going on there, put on by a group called them. Mexicano Quintet, uh, and so it was a gathering space for a lot of the activists and, and intellectuals of, uh, of East Los Angeles uh, uh, during that time of the 1970s. Back in that time, the uh, Civil Rights, you had the Black Panthers, you had the Chicano uh, Brown Berets. Uh, there was a lot of things going on for civil rights, and to make a statement, you visual, um, the first form of business was uh, writing on a wall and the in time, you know, so that was a form of a statement to, to let people know what was happening and uh, what was um, great. We had the facilities there and we had the artists. It's just that I wish we had more of it. We did. We all felt yeah. the same thing. Right. We, we needed to identify with something. Uh, I wasn't being treated as a first-rate American citizen. Uh, you know, I mean, it's um, unfortunate. That was those were the times, and that's what caused people to stand up and, and protest. And uh, you had the blacks, uh, people marching with Martin Luther King and- uh, The farm workers. Uh, the farm workers with Cesar Chavez. It was uh, time. A, a, a time of social uh, awareness. Also the, the walkouts. Um, the schools, the literature was, you know, was all about American and it wasn't about the Latino or the ABCs, Asian, Black, Chicano. Um, there was very few of that. I mean, I mean, of uh, history of showing to the, the people of the United States was just uh, Americana, you know, just colonial. And um, 
it was just uh, more, the teachers in the East LA were like Latino, they would teach the Latino history and let them know their background. And um, there was, that's basically what came about at that time as well. Well, at that time at Mexicano, we're into political murals and stuff, and so the main man at that time for us was uh, um, Alfaro Siquerios, and of course Diego Rivera, you know, they're fine painters and stimulated all of us, at least for me, I, I pursued yeah. uh, and studied their art. This is uh, Manuel Cruz, this is uh, an example of his work, and he dealt a lot with gangs. Uh, uh, his imagery is a lot about you know, uh, well, basically the sadness of it all. Why do we, why do we kill each other? One of his murals at Ramona Gardens, which is right across mine, is about a, a an Aztec Indian holding up a, a a gang member that's been shot. And so he worked with that quite a bit. Uh, a man with a lot of heart and and, and uh, an intellectual uh, pachuco cholo Chicano artist. I think he uh, um, gave him out for the most part. Uh, community. Yeah, he basically let people have them. Most of the posters were done from our heart, you might say. Um, but there was some, at times, a political ra rally being put together and there was very, very low funds available, say $150 for 500 posters or something like that. Uh, so there was never a, any kind of real money-making ventures there, but if the money came in, it went back into buying supplies. Uh, we were always looking for donors to, to supply us with, uh, sc you know, screen materials and so on, and paints. Uh, somehow they, they would show up. Mostly, like I said, most of the time it was just a free forum uh, approach to somebody wanting to put out a, a poster. In the case of, uh, of the uh, gallo uh, with the rat uh, uh, image, and uh, that was Armando Cabrera wanting to say what he wanted to say as, as a social activist in, in the Chicano art movement. This is an image of the Mexicano Art Center um, printing room, you might say. Uh, this is in the back studio area. In the front of this building, we had the gallery. Uh, and the person that you see there is Armando Cabrera. Mm -hmm. uh, he's crouching, and then the guy with the cap is me. Uh, we are, I guess, cleaning up the area. You see the, uh, uh, the drying racks that we made, uh, very flimsy. Uh, pieces of wood uh, and then strung across with fishing line to support mm -hmm. the, uh, the posters once they were laid on and mm -hmm. air dried. Uh, sick, uh, this is circa 1973. No compres lechuga. It has the farm worker uh, image in front of the uh, farm worker bird. And that was created by uh, Armando Cabrera. Um, it was 1972. We received a grant to produce these uh, posters for the for the farm workers so uh, they would come to us uh, and ask us uh, for a specific uh, image that they wanted for a specific protest that was going to take place at a safe way for instance or in, in this case uh, it was it was a, it was going to be taking place in Deleno that was per se how a lot of the posters were produced for for the farm workers a lot of the kids that went in there even artists printed up the issues that they had on, on, on their minds, mm -hmm. whether if it was about dealing with the gang killings in our community, the school system because of the lousy schooling we got, or mm -hmm. the immigration issues, the war issues, uh, all those things. And the kids were printing t-shirts and uh, uh, out of their own ideas, uh, Armando was there to uh, direct them as far as uh, how to go ahead with the process of printing their own posters. So when they got a hold of the idea, they were on their own. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so, yeah, it, uh, whoever uh, got to the table first got to print up their poster. Chicano Defense Fund, that was produced at the Mexicano Art Center. I figured it was 1973. Armando Cabrera was in charge of the printing. Uh, the design itself was brought to us. Uh, it was shot on, onto the film, onto the screen, and um, quickly printed up. Um, a lot of times, I, I, I believe this one was ordered through a art center or community center, uh, El Joaquin Murieta Center, which is on uh, uh, Woodrow Boulevard and Atlantic uh, Boulevard in East Los Angeles, and it's been there for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, centers like that would at times approach us for uh, posters to be produced for, for such uh, events that they were having. At another time, we had this same image on there, um, 
and we printed it upside down or it was an upside down american flag and this was printed on it this imagery mm -hmm. and then it had uh, uh, a stenciled uh, night riders or something like that it was sort of a clubhouse mm -hmm. thing that we had there but lo and behold we have the sheriff's station uh, cops come over here and raid our space like they did several times and they took it mm -hmm. and we never saw it again Mm -hmm. um, they would they would do that instead of coming in with a search warrant like they're supposed to. No, they'd come and kick the door open they because we're political. They would come in like that and cruise by there. It was it, up to this day, the sheriff's department still harasses citizens in East Los Angeles, and it's harassment. The Zapata poster, the Rifa poster, was uh, produced to make money, to sell it as a fine art quality poster uh, for the center, mm -hmm. and Leonard Castellanos designed it. Um, it went through several editions of printing, um, but um, we were always there. And when I say we, the gang, uh, people involved with the center, uh, uh, s such people as Frankie Jimenez, who was a young kid there, but he would help pull the sheet and take it out to have it uh, dry, uh, put on the drying rack. Uh, others were involved with uh, the uh, cleaning of the screens, but uh, it was a uh, a weld oil operation where everybody knew their part and uh, Leonard was directing and and there we are 500 posters in, in one night. What does the Rifa mean? Rifa is basically long long live, viva if you wish. Mm -hmm. uh, it says um, you know what we really uh, we really uh, thrive here that's why that's basically it Thri thrive you thrive with power the energy viva sort of thing mm -hmm. uh, so Rifa, mm -hmm. Rifa el barrio.